So I'm just delighted at the way Barry has set the scene. <coughs> um, I'm going to talk briefly about UI15 itself. And um, I think you can now see how lucky I was that the, uh, the scene had been set for me a, uh, coming to, back to New Zealand after my time at Ohio State University. Um, back to people that I had never met before, and Wellington I didn't know, nor did I know McMurdo South, but I'd spent a lot of time further south, so I knew the rocks. That was the one thing that brought us together. Was, um, we'd all interested in the same rocks. So, so here's the, the, uh, the party. And uh, on this slide, I've got the work that we did. Yep, that's it. But if we just pause on the party for a moment. Um, <clears throat> the, um, I'd like to um, oh, acknowledge Rosie, who's in the uh, listening in now, um, as well as uh, Dave, and it's nice that uh, you can join us. Um, but particularly Barry, I want to thank uh, for the preparatory work because when I arrived, having met everyone and uh, uh, doing some planning together, in the middle of that year, I actually went overseas. And it's sort of a wee bit cheeky having just arrived in a new place to go overseas. But I did go to a couple of conferences. One was the Gondwana Symposium in South Africa, and the other was the Geosciences Conference in Oslo. And um, there I could see just how interested the, um, the Antarctic world was. In fact, the Gondwana world was at those times, and Barry has uh, referred to that uh, uh, interest. But VUI-15, um, we, uh, in fact, I even missed out on the Antarctic Training Week, uh, which was a feature in those days and a very good one. And so Barry carried the can there, everybody else was there but me. So uh, in fact, our expedition began um, with um, Barry and I going on our own to Beacon Heights. Um, in, and you can see the date there, November 7. It's quite cold in November in Antarctica. Um, so I just want to see if this works. That's uh, Barry at Beacon Heights, um, looking out over the Taylor Glacier um, on about November the 10th. And I can remember it was so cold that we not only uh, had our double sleeping bags on the mountain, but uh, we had uh, our clothing as well. But that's also uh, what made us interested, these sort of spectacular sequences. Uh, they had been um, studied and mapped in a sort of a general way, but not in the sort of detail that I felt we should be doing them. That is meter by meter, uh, going up those uh, slopes, measuring them so that you could correlate the layers from place to place. But there was, the big story is there and was understood. It's really a climate history of uh, those, uh, well, 200 million years of the Gondwana strata of Antarctica. So um, from there, uh, the whole group flew into the Skelton Neve. And um, this was the area that Barry had been in before. And uh, with Peter and collected the fish fossils. And you can see there uh, um, that we had uh, Alex Ritchie and uh, Gavin Young to collect the fish. And I can report from their time there that they collected one and a half tons of rock with fish. And it was very successful. But for four of us, uh, our, our job was to record the uh, uh, going up to, um, the uh, the outcrops of the beacon strata uh, in the area, making these detailed measurements. In fact, um, the, uh, we measured over 5,000 meters of um, 
started not all in the same place, but just, just to put it all together. But at that stage, um, um, Rosemary and John were honor students. And uh, I can't remember at what point we decided who would do what, but I know that Rosemary was very keen on um, the plants, plant fossils, but particularly the pollen, because um, uh, pollen is sort of more diagnostic in a way than these, uh, but there were certain challenges. Um, but even so, um, she, she did that extremely well. John settled on, um, there's a particular layer that has the fission, which uh, made it attractive. And uh, he can tell you a little bit more about that uh, later on. But uh, um, that, uh, that really worked out very well. And then of course, Rodney and uh, Dave, did get to the Warren Range cell, and you've seen what a spectacular feature that was. Um, so, these are the areas that we went to. You can see they're quite some distance from Scott Base. There's the Skelton Neve um, is um, uh, quite uh, large. Um, where are we? So, Scott Base is here. Uh, Beacon Heights is there. So we spent, um, uh, well, some of us spent uh, about one and a half months in the Skelton Near Bay. I'll come back to that in a moment. Uh, but just to um, say that from here, when we were pulled out, uh, a group with John Rodney and Dave went up to Allen Hills. And um, then Rosie, Graham, um, Gavin and I went down to the Darwin Mountains. Um, Allen Hills for Dolorites, Darwin Mountains for more beacon. Now, um, there was some incidents, and I was uh, that uh, we don't often talk about, but I thought I'd share with you. Uh, uh, and um, the first involves me, and uh, you can see that uh, we'd been in the field two days when. Um, John here and I were in the tent that morning and I wasn't feeling too good. And uh, John was just telling the story earlier, but, and, uh, but uh, we can have uh, The short story is that I passed out. John saw that I was in trouble. He was feeling not too great. Um, shouted out to Barry. Barry came over. And, Yep, and this is why Barry's medical experience is so useful. <laughs> so um, the next thing I knew was that I was being resuscitated while lying on my back in the snow. And so, but we recovered. That was the first, uh, well, just about terminated the expedition right there, but uh, never mind, never mind. I said fear. Don't do that to me again, and he said, <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, um, we recovered. Now, the skeleton nave um, had sastrugi, this is ridges in the snow, that were okay for the skis of a, uh, a Hercules aircraft landing, but they were very rough on motor toboggans. And so, having recovered from our first challenge. Um, we uh, headed towards the area of the fish fossils, and uh, you can see the sastrugi were hard. Oh, travel slow and difficult. We suffered our first broken sled runner, had trouble starting number one toboggan. We had four toboggans for eight people, uh, four sleds. They were supposed to have been overhauled in the winter, but in fact, when we checked, the spark plugs, the spark plugs hadn't even been changed. So, um, uh, so it's a mix of a maintenance issue and the fact that we were traveling through difficult country. Uh, but to follow that, by the end of the trip, we managed from the four toboggans to put together two that worked. And um, when I got back to Scott Base, 
uh, reporting to Bob Thompson, superintendent. He was very cross for having us having broken his toboggans. And I was very cross because uh, he had given us equipment that uh, should not have been allowed to go into the field. So we had some uh, robust uh, words, but we ended up uh, still, um, I think, uh, appreciating what each other had managed to achieve. The um, some good news, and and in a way, um, just want to reflect on the achievements of Alex and uh, Gavin, but noting that. Um, we had really windy weather. And in fact, uh, Gavin was blown off an outcrop, but undamaged. Uh, and then we measured these sections and they found excellent fish. But the last excerpt um, was um, of another wind incident where um, things didn't go quite so well. Uh, in fact, they went rather badly because um, Alex and Barry, it was, it was a windy day. We weren't going to travel, do any serious work, but they did a bit of exploration and Barry lost his footing and uh, fell at 60 meters and got a few cuts and bruises. And uh, they decided that, uh, in fact, Perhaps he should get attention back at base. And all went very smoothly. And I think, yeah, it was nine in the morning when uh, that's from the and he fell and he was uh, back at Scott Base uh, uh, that evening. So the mountain we came home is Mount Tom Seagull. Well, the. Um, um, so um, from that point, um, yeah, Barry was out, and that it was after that that um, uh, Rodney and Dave went up to Ellen Hills, and Rosie and I went down to the Darwin Mountains. So um, um, let me see where I got to. Ah. So I just wanted to, to end this discussion um, by acknowledging, in the same way that Barry has uh, these people, but I'm going to follow this with um, a video of, it's a 10-minute uh, video of uh, our trip to the Darwin Mountains.